Hey everyone, it is Char from Char's Fashionation. Yes, I had to start this video out kind of funny. Um, so I'm trying to keep my mind busy while mourning my ex-father-in-law. Don't get me wrong, only divorced his son, not him. Um, love him to death. Okay, um, this is going to be my mock-up hair wide leg pants. Did I get around to making the other pattern piece for my mock-up? No. Um, so I'm leaving enough up here for the high waist and I'm leaving enough down here for, um, for the seam allowance. So as you guys see, I have a pair of pajamas which I consider to actually be a mock-up. I mean, up on my dress form, my Western Duster is considered to be a mock-up from uh, the first coat I ever made. So I do actually consider that to be a mock-up of a garment. So what I do is I lay the butt angle right here. You guys might think that's a little weird. Actually, no, it's not. It actually seriously it makes perfect sense um so what i do is i put the end edge of that here and since these are going to be a wide leg i'm not too concerned about cutting and then having it come flare back out and that's what we're going to do with this as you guys know, I don't have a pause button. I do have some food going in the oven. So I'm going to try to do this quickly so that you get to see. And always remember, don't ever discard your mock-ups. You can, if you made it to the point of wearables, you can always wear your mock-up. Especially if you used a beautiful fabric, you can always wear your mock-up either out in public or feel free to uh, wear it around the house. Always feel free to wear it around the house. Don't let your fabric ever go to waste or anything you've ever made go to waste. Um. I know you guys always hear me say, say, be your environment by, yeah, well, that would be kind of part of it, right? So we're also going to give some seam allowance for how the flare goes for the pant. I know, I probably should have weighted this down here too, but right now we're going to focus on the cut before focusing on the rest of that so that we have this even. If you want to try to make this as even as possible even though it's just your mock-up and you can have like these extra pieces always save that in case you need it. Hey look it's a cute headband there's a thought for you. Um, actually, you could use that piece as a scrap headband, something for a shirt. You would automatically have a cuff piece for a shirt or even a, a coat, a jacket. That's an idea for you. Or even the collar piece for a jacket. That would work as well. Um, I want to welcome anybody that's new here to my channel. I don't often say that enough. Um, and I should. I should always welcome people. Uh, this is the correct thing to do. Always welcome your newbies. It's the correct thing to do. So, yeah. Um, I've been enjoying the history bounders. Now making these wide leg pants like this is actually part of history bounding. So 
I did put a poll up on my Instagram, which I don't make public here. Um, too many weirdos. <laughs> Not my history bounders, I'm just saying, because I'm pretty sure some of my history bounders have had the weirdos coming out of the woodwork. Um, now when you have little scraps like this, save it for when you want to make a stuffed animal. Absolutely. One other thing I do is I will always fold one leg up. Always do that and tuck it out of my way when I go to do this. And like then cut out this way. Now this is the back and you guys normally see me with like my pins when I do this so that I can mark blue as back. Yes, blue is back, and any other colors weren't, so, <laughs> yes, yes indeed, any other color is the front, why do I always trim that from the airport, I don't know, so, um, like I said, you know, we're going to make this a wide leg, but at a point up here, is where we actually, you know, you want to bring that in. You actually want to bring that in. Now I'm going to kind of make this a bell until I come to a point. And you can also find your uh, fold edges. Find your folds that actually helps when you're bringing in for a pair of wide leg pants. Now, if you're like me and your thyroid wants to go wonky on you all the time, you tend to have the same problem as weight gain, weight loss, weight gain, weight loss. And it just wants to play that game with you. Here's where we start going inward. And I always save this strip right here at the end. And I use that for bias binding and bias tape. You guys might think that's a little weird. It's actually not weird. <laughs> also, what I do is when I cut this, I try to make sure, because I already know my measurements. Oh my gosh, I'm losing so much weight. It's ridiculous. Um, and this is the back. And like I said, this is going to be a wide leg. So what I'll do with my scrap fabrics like this that are really big is save that for pocket pieces. Um, it's not like I just take everything and just toss it together. No. Now remember, this is high-waisted, so don't come at me for that. This is high-waisted. Yes, I could have left this back part like that. And this is the back. So what I will do is toss the back piece over here, folded like that. Oh, no. It almost went into my coffee. Sorry, death wish. Not today, my friend. <laughs> Always drinking that death wish coffee. Best coffee you'll ever have. Yes, you guys have probably noticed my weight loss. It's not a weight loss journey per se. I just, I had, I'll admit this. I stopped eating at one point and I, I didn't mean to, but then I found out at that same exact time my ex-father-in-law stopped eating. Maybe there's a connection. I don't know. It's an X-file to me. So anyway, this will be the front. And we do the same thing, except for we don't have back booty area sticking out there. We have the front sticking out. Um, yeah, pretty much. And like I said, you know, I do wear my mock-ups. I do enjoy wearing the clothes. Uh, this has the drawstring in it. This was from my 31 Looks of Halloween. 
And not only was I doing makeup looks, but I was doing, you know, fashion. You know, the fashion nation isn't just about clothing. There's a lot of things that are, you know, fashionable. Food is a fashion. It's a style. Um, like, I'll watch Mimi G. And she works with simplicity. And, like, you used to be really cheery. Are you tired? Because you look tired. Or maybe you just need a vacation, girl. I don't know. Mimi just, she looks tired. I worry about that. Like, you know, when we get really tired and maybe we just need a break. And some of the best are out there. And they, they just look like they've worn themselves out. So try to never wear yourself out. Just try to never do that. You'll hurt yourself doing that. Trust me, I know. I know that too well. So, these are my smaller pants, and they're kind of big on me. I know they didn't look it, but they are. <laughs> okay, this is the front. So we'll take the gusset of the front right here. And again, got to lay that out. Now, when you go to lay that out, remember, you can always pull this leg forward. Make sure that you have the under leg down. Um, I may want to grab that other one so I have, like, perfect measurement at the top. Lay those next to each other. I'm trying to do this quick because I really do have food in the oven. And I need to do this quickly. And then later on, I will show you guys in another video how I'm going to do my stay stitches by hand before this goes to a machine. It's a lot of work for stay stitches. But it's worth it. It's worth it in the end. So I'm just going to turn this this way so that we have the booty area here. That way you can mark with the front gusset with the booty area. And then bring this down. Sorry for the clavage. <laughs> Sorry for the clavage, my friends. I cannot help what I was given. Um, so yeah, but let's get that laid there. Center that leg. Make sure that this is pulled down enough. Oh, yep. And pulled up enough. Nope. Okay, we got to try to even that. I think we're good. And for this piece, I'm not going to like cut so far inward on this piece. You figure it out. Trust me, you're going to figure this out. Um, because I'm going to just like come in on the leg to, a, to that point and just cut it up. Um, and I do want to keep the ending of this. Like I said, this is what I use for my bias tape is the ends of this. I just straight cut them. And that's why you always see me cutting my fabric a specific way. Um, is because I will literally save the edges in case I need that for bias tape later on. Um, I know it seems a little weird, a little redundant, and a lot of time consuming does go into this, but in the end it's actually worth it. So, uh, yeah, 
really hoping that my friend texts me in case somebody comes home and wants to take over the kitchen. That way my stuff is not going to. I always try to be polite to other people. That's just me though. You know, some people take it wrong. They get twisted. See, okay, look, see? The other piece, like I said, you could use this for a headband. You can use it for a cuff piece. Or you can sew them together and make a part to the waistband. Absolutely. So, so let's continue this. And I'm going to try to skip cutting on this as much as possible. So like I said, I like to try to save that. I know it sounds weird, but I do like to try my best to save it. And I'm purposely cutting this to be a wide leg because there's something that I want to make. I don't like wearing dresses. Um, that's just me. I've never felt comfortable in them. Maybe it's because I feel dresses and skirts are a bit accessible, if you know what I mean. So we're going to go ahead and take that right up. Now, if I need to do any pleating on this or add on, I think I covered my microphone. <laughs> okay, so we'll put the back piece over here and I'll throw the front piece over there. That way I remember which is which. Um, and I can go ahead and remove the pants Toss them up there like yay. Um, and this here, remove this. More fabric, more usable fabric. Like I said, I have a yard of this fabric left. Am I worried about that? No, I'm not worried about it. And am I worried about coming over here and cutting on this? Absolutely not. Um, because I know how I am with my patterning. <coughs> I will eventually end up cutting this anyway. So that I can put the pieces together. Not just in the stay stitch. But also to try it on after I do the stay stitch. In case I need to take that stay stitch out. By just a smidge. So we don't want to take too much off the front, just a bit, not by much. And then we can actually take the scissor inside. And if you have a good stiff fabric like this, this I know I'm using water bottles in my phone today. You're like, where's all your death wish stuff? Oh, sweeties. I'd put my five pound bag of death wish on this fabric. Oh, that's, that was such a smooth, smooth coffee this morning. I love all their bags of coffee. Well, I haven't tried all their bags of coffee yet, so I can't really, really say that. I need to try their pumpkin one. Um, okay. So we have this part cut. I will put it over there. Get my scissors out of the way. Um, take a drink of water. And now that we have both pieces cut, I will be able to put these together later and I will show you this for now I got to go tend to I have a roast in the oven and I even save money on how I even make a roast 
appear on a budget like I am sorry about the crap shot um, <clears throat> I try to save money and I will buy some London broils they're about that long cut them in half and make a roast out of them or I'll flank them and make them into steak I mean hey gotta save a dollar here and there sorry that's my extra rib cage showing it it's gross So I am going to end this video with, hey, that's one empty bottle of water. <laughs> and I stop another one. So, um, I will be back later to show you how I pinned every, everything, but how I pinned <laughs> everything together, because that's kind of funny. That's when you know it's Monday. And I want everybody out there just stay happy, stay healthy, stay positive, and as always, stay blessed. And remember that even when you have somebody in your life that you were no longer, how can I even say this? Um, no longer part of that child, their child's life in adulthood, um, and those people are always good to you no matter what. And, you know, my ex-father-in-law, he always called to check on me. He would call to see how I was doing. Um, just such a kind and generous man. I never asked him for money after the divorce. I never asked him for money. He actually called me up and he was like, he's like, Char, he's like, you know, um, he owes you one last check from taxes. And I'm like, what? I'm like, no, I don't want it. See, that's how I am. I didn't want the money. I was like, forget it. I don't want it. He's like, are you sure? Uh, yeah, I don't want it. You keep it. And he was like, no, I don't want to keep what's yours. And, you know... Just people like that, and he knew I didn't like handouts. I still don't like handouts. Hey, I may live here with my friend, but I'm not taking a handout. I actually help. Um, I try to keep the house clean. That's why I don't like a dirty carpet. Like I'm always picking my hair off the carpet because I have a lot of hair. And, um, or I'll take tape across the carpet because I have to get a new vacuum cleaner soon. But, um, yeah, but I don't like to ask for a handout. The only thing I ever have to ask for is a ride somewhere because I can't drive due to epilepsy. But other than that, I refuse to ask for help. Oh, and what am I going to do with the other yard of fabric? Now, I've thought about this. Excuse me. Um, now, if I actually need to cut extra, extra pieces for the flare sides, um, then I have extra fabric. I have a yard of it. Um, and that always comes in handy, right? Don't waste your fabrics. Even wear your mock-ups. Don't let that go to waste. Um, if you have a good fabric, wear it out in public and you feel comfortable doing that, wear it out in public. You can make something a uh, from one era fit in in this era. And um, I will be showing people how to do that. Sorry, I have this thing. Like, I know that I've lost some weight, but I still feel like, yeah, maybe some people feel the same way I do. Um, I'm not sure, but that's just me. Um... Anyway, guys, you guys know I have a ton of fabric <laughs> coming up here soon after I do like these. Um, I will be teaching regalia. I made a mock-up pattern 
for a pair of moccasins and will I be making a mock-up for my moccasins? Yes, I will be making a mock pair of mocks. <laughs> That's a Native American joke. <laughs> oh, and teaching you guys the history between, oh, and then there's my feathers up there that I got to work with with the peyote stitch. Um, or peyote stitch, however you want to pronounce it. But it's not peyote. Um, anyway, guys, I want everybody out there to stay happy, stay healthy, stay positive, and as always stay blessed. And I really do got to go check on that food now. So I will see you later.